In this video, I'm gonna tell you guys how to build your own speakers. And not just any pair of speakers, but an objectively, a scientifically pretty great speaker. Let's get into it. This speaker is the Directiva. I, I know it's a bit of a funny name, but the idea is about directivity. And it's all made possible thanks to the guys over at Anchormank. The M5C is an excellent 3D printer. You can check out the link in the video description as well as the G code for this project on Anchor Make's Make It Real platform. Now, I made a video covering why I'm doing this in part one. You can check that out if you want at the link in the video description. Anchor Make made these videos possible. They are sponsoring it and I use their 3D printers to build these speakers. 3D printing a speaker allows us to do a few things we wouldn't normally be able to do. But a lot of people were also really concerned about using a 3D printed speaker because they were worried it would resonate. But the nice thing is, is it's all about the rigidity of the materials you're using, the wall thickness, the infill dimensions. You have a pretty firm control over what the actual cabinet's going to be like in the end and how rigid it is. Which is why it's very important when we get to a later part of the video, you pay attention to the print settings I use for this speaker if you want optimal results. If you don't print it properly, yes, you can get a speaker with a messed up frequency response or resonance issues. But if you print it correctly, you shouldn't have any of those problems. For this speaker, I used a ceramic tweeter and woofer from SB Acoustics, but also SB Acoustics Passive Radiator. The design of this was originally ported, but we actually started getting much better results with a passive radiator and a custom waveguide to help control the directivity. Ideally, we have directivity that's fairly controlled going forward out of the speaker in a relatively cardioid pattern, but it's also designed to use near field and not towed in, so you're listening a little bit off axis in either direction. This was done with a little bit of sacrifice to the vertical contour, but to a point where it's not going to matter since you're listening near field, and in near field the directivity is pretty excellent. So what will you need to do this? Well, you're going to need close to four kilograms of 3D printing filament. I used PLA Plus for this, and I did it on two of the Anchormake M5 5C printers. You'll need all of the mentioned drivers as well as the passive radiators, and we'll also have to build crossovers in a little bit. You could use whatever connections you want for this. I personally opted for SpeakOn, which I'll link those in the video description. SpeakOn is an excellent connection, and honestly for me, it just makes the most sense. This is a passive speaker. It does not need any sort of DSP, though you certainly can improve it a little bit more if you want to add DSP correction. The overall goal of this was to achieve a plus or minus one decibel frequency response from around 100 hertz to over 10 kilohertz. And that it did very well. So let's start off with printing. You'll want to orient the hat, the top half of the speaker, with the open side down. Luckily, you don't have to print this with any sort of supports. I would do the speed somewhere around 200 millimeters a second with a wall thickness of four millimeters and an infill density of 30%. For the bottom half, we want to print it with the open side facing up, with the bottom of the speaker facing down. Again, no supports, four millimeter wall thickness and 30% infill. This should come out using a little bit under a kilogram of filament. And I would also print this one somewhere in the ballpark of 170 to 200 millimeters a second. Now, the slower you go with these, the higher your quality is going to be of the print. So if you want a really, really nice surface finish, let it go slower, let it do 70 millimeters even. It just depends on how fast you want it done and how nice you want the surface finishing to be. Let these run for a day, come back to it, and you have your parts ready to assemble. You can take these two halves, put some silicone or construction adhesive all along the interior where they're going to join, push them together, and then I personally put on a rubber glove, go through the inside, and try and fill in any gaps, just to make sure it's nice and secured where the two pieces join. After letting that cure overnight, I came back to the speaker and used a soldering iron, inserted threaded inserts into all of the retaining parts for the woofer and the passive radiator. And then once that's done, you put a gasket around where the tweeter is going to be inserted, just to make sure it seals nicely. You can take the waveguide that comes with the tweeter off the front while being careful not to completely disassemble the tweeter. This coil is very fragile. And very carefully with the speaker facing up, insert the tweeter into the chassis and tighten down these four screws in a cross pattern. You don't want to over tighten them, but definitely get the tweeter where it's snug and not moving anywhere. 
Then before inserting the woofer, let's go on and get a few more things knocked out. You'll need some polyfill and some sort of a retaining mechanism. I use some elastic, but you could also use string, twine, anything like that. And I just hot glued it in place in a cross pattern to hold some polyfill in the top half of the enclosure. Now I'm also gonna put some polyfill in the bottom half later, but the important thing is, is that we don't want to put too much between the woofer and the passive radiator, but it's still nice to have a little bit of damping inside the cabinet. From here, we can build the crossover. You're going to need the following components, and something important to note is that you want to get inductors with as low of resistance as you can, ideally like under 0.4 of an ohm. I'll have all these components linked in the description so you can check them out, but just in case any of them disappear off the internet, keep that spec in mind. Now, as far as the schematic is concerned, this part is for the tweeter, this part is for the woofer. Once your crossover is assembled, you can put it into the chassis, connect it to the speakers, both the tweeter and woofer, as well as to your speak on connector. Editor DMS here. As a quick note, if you want less trouble, you can put in a resistor that goes straight to ground right here. A lower value resistor will lower the amount of volume the tweeter puts out. A higher value resistor will do less. And if you like the stock tuning, just leave it as is with no resistor. Then we can insert the woofer, screwing it into place, insert the passive radiator screwing into place and start using the speaker it's ready to go repeat all these steps another time for your second speaker and you've got a pretty insane set of near field speakers for under $500. Now, if you want to make this project, you can slice it yourself. Technically, you can do it on almost any 3D printer as long as it's capable of printing things of these dimensions repeatedly. But if you want to use my exact slice settings and know that it'll have the same result as me, you can go on Anchor Make's Make It Real platform, which will let you print it on an Anchor Make printer the exact same way that I did. Again, I want to give a big thank you to Anchor Make for helping to fund this project and Blaine, Mad Economist, as well as SC Gorg for helping to design it. It's not super common people People are willing to pitch in on projects like this, a free open source project that we don't sell, that we don't really benefit anything from. This is all now in you guys' hands. Anyone is welcome to take the speaker and do whatever you want with it. You can build it for yourself, you can build it and sell it for all I care, as long as you don't try and take the design and copyright it. Be kind of a dick move. I know I've got some other friends that are already working on building the speaker right now, and I'm curious to see what they think about it. For me, this was meant to be a near field replacement to my JBL 306P Mark IIs, which are now going to live in my living room instead. I do a lot of work at my computer editing these videos, doing freelance audio work and a few other things, and I really want to make sure I have as good of a setup there as possible. So I'm going to be using these speakers. I'm putting my money where my mouth is, and soon you'll see them set up behind me here. But for now, that's going to wrap this video up. Again, a big thank you to Anchor Make for sponsoring this video. I actually bought both of these 3D printers with my own money and they've been fantastic. If you want to check out part one of this video, I'll have it linked in the video description as well as all the resources you'll need to make these speakers. So if you like this video, guys, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, get the Discord or forums, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one, guys. Peace.